Good afternoon, everyone, and thank you for joining us here today. <clears throat> My name is Greg Ford. I'm chairman of the Wake County Board of Commissioners. I'm joined by Wake County Manager David Ellis, our Human Services Director Regina Petaway, and our Emergency Management Director um, uh, Darshan Patel. We, along with 100 Wake County employees, have been working long hours these last three weeks uh, to respond to the COVID-19 virus within our community. Our Emergency Operations Center uh, has been bustling from sunrise to long after sunset every day uh, since the uh, uh, first uh, confirmed case here at the beginning of this month. I just want to say how much I appreciate our staff uh, for taking time away from their loved ones to serve our residents uh, during this challenging time. Um, there are so many of our staff members across the county, um, partners, uh, all working together to help uh, plan for and prepare for this virus and this crisis. I'd also like to thank our municipal leaders uh, for their unanimous ongoing collaboration and support as we all work together. Um, specifically, um, today's uh, 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 recommendations and directives have all been supported and signed off on by all 12 of Wake County's mayors. And I want to uh, acknowledge them here today. Thanks to the following. Mayor Smith of Anger, Mayor Gilbert of Apex, Mayor Weinbrecht of Cary, Mayor McLeod of Clayton, Mayor Shule of Durham, Mayor Byrne of Fuquay Verena, Mayor Marshburn of Garner, Mayor Sears of Holly Springs, Mayor Robertson of Nightdale, Mayor Cawley of Morrisville, Mayor Baldwin of Raleigh, Mayor Curran of Rollsville, Mayor Jones of Wake Forest, Mayor Gray of Wendell, and Mayor Matheny of Zebulon. Thank you so much to each of you as your community leaders for working with the county in tandem. As the COVID-19 situation continues to evolve, so much is our response, uh, should our response, and that's why we're here today. The number of positive cases here in Wake County is increasing daily and putting more and more of our fellow citizens and residents at risk. And that's why we're talking about new steps today that we're taking to stop the spread of coronavirus. At this time, I would like to invite our Wake County Manager, David Ellis, to the podium to tell you about some additional restrictions we're putting in place today to protect our most at-risk residents um, from contracting the virus and also help keep our emergency departments from being overcome with sick patients in the days ahead. David. Thank you, Chairman Ford. Good afternoon, everyone. As the Chairman mentioned, I have some important information to share with you today about the county's response to COVID-19 to the COVID-19 situation. As you know, and as was mentioned earlier, the number of people who have tested positive for the virus in Wake County continues to grow. The current number of positive results in Wake County is 49. We are, we're still waiting on the results of 47 additional tests with more people being monitored every day. Based on this upward trend and guidance from the state, we've decided to take additional action to help stop, spread, to help stop the spread of COVID-19 in our community and protect our health care system from becoming overwhelmed. Today, Chairman Ford signed a new emergency proclamation that adds an additional layer of safeguards to keep our 1 million residents safe. And they will remain in effect through April 30th, although they may be rescinded earlier if conditions sufficiently change. I'd like to walk you through those conditions now. First, we're telling all fitness centers, gyms, hair and nail salons, spas, tanning, massage, and tattoo salons, and other grooming services that they must close. It's too difficult for these places to operate and observe social distancing practices as recommended by the state and the CDC. We're also prohibiting large gatherings of 50 or more people in one place. That includes auditoriums, theaters, conference rooms, and any other confined space both indoors and outdoors. The move is directly in line with guidance from Governor Roy Cooper and state health officials to maximize our opportunities for social distancing. It does not include critical services like hospitals, government operations, banks, retailers, and retailers that provide essential services, pet stores, and hardware stores. We understand that business owners may have questions about whether they can remain open or if they have to close. And we've anticipated that and are ready to help. We've built, we've built a special page on our COVID-19 website, wakegov.com COVID-19, 
that lists different types of businesses and gives examples of which ones could stay open under the new declarations and which ones should close. We've also created a special phone line that business owners can call with questions about this process. That number is 919-856-7420. It's live now and staff will answer calls from 8 a.m. through 8 p.m. seven days a week. We're also teaming up with our partners at the Greater Raleigh Chamber of Commerce and Wake County Economic Development to assist businesses who are affected by this change. They've graciously agreed to post information on their website that will inform businesses about opportunities for financial assistance, offer communications and technology tools, and share resources about COVID-19. The private sector, especially our small businesses and restaurants in Wake County, are part of what makes our quality of life here so good. And we want to support them during this time as much as possible. And I want to say none of these decisions is easy. A lot of research and thought goes into making them. It's a job we don't take lightly. We understand how incredibly difficult it is for small business owners to weather this COVID-19 storm. We truly appreciate the services and value that they provide, but the risk of keeping non-essential businesses open right now is too big for our community to bear. We need to close them down for a short period of time because it's what's in the best interest of our residents, health and safety. Another area being addressed by the amendments to the state of emergency declaration is local nursing homes, long-term care facilities and assisted living facilities. Residents age 65 and older and those with underlying health issues are most at risk for becoming seriously ill if they contract COVID-19. To protect them and the staff who care for them, we are now requiring these facilities to stop hosting gatherings like social events where visitors and residents will be closer than six feet apart. Even in dining areas, we're asking them to practice social distancing and seat residents at least six feet apart. We're also restricting visitation. Starting today, residents of nursing homes, long-term care facilities, and assisted living facilities can only have one adult visitor per day unless it is an end-of-life situation. And that visit must take place inside the, the resident's room. Visitors must be screened for fever of 100.4 degrees or higher, a cough, or difficulty breathing before they can enter the building. Then they must show ID, sign a visitor's log, and provide contact information in case our public health division needs to reach them. Volunteers at nursing homes, long-term care facilities, and assisted living centers must also be screened for COVID-19 symptoms. Excuse me. Again, we're putting these measures in place to protect the residents of these facilities who are most at risk and prevent an overwhelming of our health care system. The new declaration also prohibits our residents from using publicly and privately owned HOA playgrounds. This new step prevents adults and children from sharing germs and breaking social distancing guidelines as they play. The action does not include backyard, playground equipment, or other amenities at parks, open spaces, such as greenways and walking trails. They are open for use and we encourage residents to continue biking, hiking, and running on them while following good social distance practice. I've just shared with you some of the new restrictions that are now in place due to COVID-19. Next, I wanna share the recommendations we're making to businesses that remain open to help stop the spread of coronavirus. First, we, start, we suggest they start doing temperature checks and respiratory screenings for employees before they come into the workplace. At Wake County, we're taking the same approach our employees who have been working 12 hours in our emergency operations center, each employee is screened before they walk into the EOC to ensure that their temperature falls within uh, guidelines. And that's important because that way, if anyone is sick, we can send them home immediately and not risk infecting the whole team. We hope businesses will see the value in taking this precaution. Second, we recommend that businesses extend the same health screening approach to their customers. We ask them to consider checking, for client, checking clients for fevers greater than 100.4 and breathing issues before they enter the building. Businesses, businesses can then turn away sick customers and minimize the risk not only to their employees, but to other, cl other clients. None of this is easy, folks. COVID-19 is changing the, 
our day-to-day -day lives in ways that we could not have imagined a week, two weeks, or three weeks ago. We understand it's challenging to close the doors of your businesses, stop visiting loved ones in nursing homes, and not taking your children to the playground. And we appreciate the sacrifice that everyone is making for the benefit of the Wake County community. By putting these new restrictions and recommendations into effect, we're limiting the spread of COVID-19, protecting our residents who are most at risk, and ensuring our healthcare system has, still has the capacity to continue serving our community. We're all in this together. We're all on Team Wake. I want to thank you for uh, coming today, and we'll take a few questions now. Sure. Yeah. Um, has there, Jonathan Alexander with the News and Observer, has there been any discussion of having a shelter in place, and why not now, given how serious uh, this pandemic is? Sure, I will. I can start with that, and uh, Director Petaway and Dashaun Patel can join in. That is definitely a tool that is in the toolbox, um, but we feel like this is a good step right now, and that um, if we do these things now, it potentially could help stop the spread of coronavirus. Yeah, the only thing I would add is that we've been doing many things in addition to um, what you've heard about today. We need to give a bit of time for these things to work before we move to um, more stringent requirements. So we would ask you to help us ask the public to please adhere to the recommendations and prohibitions that you've heard about today. Let's all get together and see if we can make those work first before we move into something else. Yeah, and I'd like to say that uh, the Emergency Operations Center continues to evaluate this on a daily basis, multiple times a day with our healthcare par partners, as well as our community partners. So as we see this progress, as we have over the last couple of weeks, we will continue to make recommendations. Uh, so a stay at home order, again, is a tool in our toolbox. Uh, we just don't feel that we are there yet uh, at this point. And, and we're hoping that these additional opportunities for our uh, residents and visitors to Wake County to implement more social distancing will allow us to continue to slow this virus. I guess under what situation could you all see that happen? We could see that happen as we start to see sustained community spread of this virus, uh, as, as other parts of our country have seen and other countries have seen. So again, we continue to uh, monitor the situation with all of our partners on a daily basis. We have our EOC open seven days a week to be able to do that and have a coordinated approach across our county. Thank you. Next question. Uh, in terms of people enjoying the outdoors right now, we have a lot of people that are going to the lakes and uh, taking advantage of the trails, but that's causing a lot of crowds in some of these areas. Would you recommend if people pull up to Shelly Lake, one of these lakes, and they see a lot of people there to turn around and go home? No, um, I, I would not, but I would recommend that they practice social distancing and that staying six feet away from another person 20 minutes or more. Um, if it's crowded, just give the crowd time to, you know, move out of your way a little bit. But no, we want people to use our greenways and trails and uh, to get that fresh air. That's also good for their mental health. Another question for the positive test that we just had out of the uh, assisted living facility in Cary. Um, how closely have you all been in touch with that? Have you been, are you able to give us any updates on that? If there is any spread, what's being done? So we are in constant contact with that facility as well as the operators of that facility from the time that we, we had this test go in into the process. Uh, we continue to be in touch with them. Uh, at this time, we don't have any additional cases that, that we are, uh, that have, we have information for, uh, but what we will continue to do is ensure that their staff is being safe. We ensure that with the restrictions that we're putting in place, not only that facility, but all of our adult care facility and long-term care facilities are practicing safe guidelines to limit visitation and to ensure that our most vulnerable population to this virus is staying as safe as we can have them be in those facilities. Any Thank you. How, how will you all enforce uh, some of these rules that you have put in place? 
David. We, we have, uh, as, as I mentioned earlier, or excuse me, as, Chair, as Chairman Ford mentioned, uh, we have had conversations and we have agreements with the mayors of all the towns within the counties, and we will be looking toward, towards our public safety, police departments, and sheriff's departments to enforce these new regulations. And I will add, with our social distancing and recommendations up to this point, um, our communities have been very good at complying and encouraging others to comply. And I really appreciate that. We need to thank them for that. I, if I may, I'm just going to add to that that um, we all, each of us individually uh, and as a community, have a responsibility to take care of ourselves and make good choices for ourselves, but also for each other. And that's one of the reasons uh, why we are implementing these additional restrictions today. But we have a social contract, folks. The understanding that we are all working together and we're all making individual and uh, community choices together means we're all responsible for ensuring that uh, these restrictions are, are put in place. They are for the health and safety and well-being of each and every one of us here in Wake County. So there is an expectation that they are followed. In instances in other communities around the country where uh, they have not been followed as stringently, well then local governments and state and national government have had to uh, look at other opportunities uh, for adding additional restrictions. We don't want to have to do that um, uh, at this point. We will wait for additional data um, uh, and, and other circumstances uh, as is needed. Um, but right now, we are all responsible for ensuring that these um, additional restrictions are uh, followed. And I'm sorry, I, I really wasn't clear, and it, it may be my fault, on the answer of the um, person at the assisted living on What is their status? How are they doing? Uh, I'll have to get back to you on their, their specific status. What I can say, though, is all of our cases that we have positive and under monitoring, we do check in with them on a regular basis uh, and ensure that, uh, you know, we understand where they are in the process of, of the disease as well as their recovery for those that are positive. How are you all doing right now on the number of tests available? I know there's been advice in some areas not to seek out a test if you're not getting symptoms. There haven't been enough tests to go around. What's it looking like in Wayne County? So our testing capacity, uh, you know, as you've seen across the country, uh, is not as great as we would like it to be. We have engaged with the state, we have engaged with private labs uh, to expand that capability as much as we can, but we do continue to follow the guidance of the CDC and our state public health division that, uh, you know, it is not a, uh, everybody just goes and requests a test. There is a process, there is criteria to receive that test, which is following up with your healthcare provider first, uh, discussing your specific specific symptoms and your health care needs and then letting you and your health care provider make that decision based on a, a negative flu test uh, and then the persistence of symptoms to re receive that test. Uh, we are working very hard with some both public and private partners to ramp up our testing capabilities for our uh, vulnerable populations as well as our frontline responders and medical personnel so that we can uh, ensure that we have the capacity to respond to this uh, as widely as possible uh, should this continue to grow. Uh, the limitations, uh, again, this, I don't have the specific numbers of tests that we have on hand, but I will say the limitations are just uh, due to the supply chain. Uh, what's actually available from testing supplies uh, to what capacities the labs have, which is why we have engaged both public and private partners to help solve this specifically for Wake County. Jamie, did you have something? No. <laughs> One more question? That's good. You mentioned local police departments will be enforcing Will they be ticketing people? What, what would that look like, them enforcing? So it, it would depend on the various jurisdictions in terms of how they want to enforce it. We, we do have, as, as our chairman mentioned, uh, a, a consistent approach across, across the county. Uh, so in, in all of these steps, you notice all of the jurisdictions that are represented in Wake County have signed on to this. And part of that is ensuring that not only from a restriction standpoint in our proclamation, but also from an enforcement standpoint, we are w all working together. So from our sheriff's office to our municipal law enforcement, through our EOC, we are coordinating uh, to ensure from the DA's office all the way down to, to the individual law enforcement 
enforcement officers on the street that we are not using a, a over-the-top methodology, uh, but there is a consistent approach across the county to ensure that people recognize that this is not to be restrictive, but truly to enforce as much social distancing as possible. And really, if, if any message can be put, put out from this is, this is truly to ensure that we have more opportunities to socially distance ourselves and slow the spread of this virus. And I, I think if you, if you look back um, in this community, there have been a number of faith-based organizations, synagogues that decided on their own to not have service or to do a virtual service. And so many people are taking it upon themselves to um, adhere to those guidelines without any enforcement. One more question. Let's do this. This be the last question, okay? Because we got to get folks back to uh, the, all the business at hand. COVID-19 in Wake County. How many have recovered so far? I will have to get back to you on that number from our public health division, but we will uh, we'll make sure we get that back. Could I just ask one more? What does this mean for Wake County schools? Are they going to be closed in the local thirtieth? So the schools, the Wake County schools, made an announcement a few weeks ago. Um, and so you'd have to follow up with the school system in terms of what they plan to do from this point forward. All right. Thank you all very much. We appreciate it. We just want to get these guys back to work at their business.